The satellite television company Dish Network has been experiencing outages for the past week or so, and we have finally figured out that the outages were not due to any normal issues that you would expect like bad weather or Elon Musk's satellites bullying the Dish Network satellites in low Earth orbit. No, Dish Network had outages because they got hit with a ransomware attack. They finally updated their website with some details about the situation. So this is what happened in Dish's own words. Thank you for your patience. On February 23rd, we experienced a cybersecurity incident that has affected some of our internal communications, customer call centers, and internet sites. We immediately activated our incident response and business continuity plans to contain, assess, and remediate the situation. We retained the services of cybersecurity experts and outside advisors to assist in the evaluation of the situation, and we notified appropriate law enforcement authorities. On February 23rd, 27th, we became aware that certain data was extracted from our IT systems as part of this incident. It's possible the investigation will reveal that the extracted data includes personal information. The forensic investigation and assessment of the impact in this incident is ongoing. As a result of this incident, many of our customers are having trouble reaching our service desks, accessing their accounts, oh boy, and making payments. Now, if you're a Dish Network customer, I'm not sure how soon you were notified about this, but the first hint that there was a problem became public on the 23rd during Dish Network's earnings call, where they mentioned at the beginning of it that there were some internal problems that they were having with their telephony systems. Thanks, Tim. Before we uh, open it up for questions, uh, just a quick update. Uh, this morning, we experienced an internal outage that's continuing to affect our internal servers and IT telephony. Our DISH and Sling services and our wireless and data networks continue to operate normally and are up and running. However, uh, some of our internal communications, customer care functions, internet sites were affected and are currently down. We're analyzing the root causes and uh, any consequences of the outage while we work to restore the affected systems as quickly as possible. Uh, with that, I'll open it up for questions. And it took until the 27th for them to become aware that any data was actually exfiltrated from their systems at all. And still, a few days after that, Dish isn't even 100% sure whether or not customer data was leaked in this breach. Now, Dish hasn't officially released a lot of information about the incident thus far. We literally just have the few paragraphs that are written here on their website. We, of course, know that their services were down pretty much all day on February the 25th. Customers couldn't even log into their accounts or any of the TV apps that were associated with Dish on that day, or at least there were widespread outages of it. I don't know if necessarily everybody was locked out. And there were a lot of employees at Dish Network that were locked out on that day as well. But there is some additional information that was alleged by sources to Bleeping Computer about the incident. So they allege here in their article that the attack targeted Dish Network's VMware ESXi servers and that someone told them the ransomware group Black Basta was responsible for the attack. Now, Black Basta is a group that's been around since at least April of 2022, and they run a ransomware as a service operation, which basically means that people can go onto the dark web and hire these guys from their official website, pay them some Bitcoin or Monero, and then give them some details about a business that they want to get hacked for whatever reason. Maybe they run a competing service and so they want to hack them so that their customers will go to them. Maybe they get fired from the business and they want to get them hacked as revenge. Who knows? Anybody can uh, apply to basically get any type of business hacked by these guys. And like many other ransomware gangs, Black Basta also utilizes the double extortion method when they hack somebody to try to get payment out of the victims. So what they do is first they will hack a business and they try to get out as much data as possible from that company, as much sensitive data as possible before they run that ransomware that encrypts all of their backups and everything that's on their production systems. And then the ransomware group is going to threaten to publish the data that was stolen from the company or they'll threaten to sell it to some other hacking group or scamming group that's gonna use the customer information to go and run some phishing attacks against those customers if the company doesn't pay up. So that way, 
the hacking gang is pressuring them from both ends, right? They're going to increase their chances of getting paid from this attack. And you've got to think that if you're some kind of TV service company and scammers can get access to customer records and billing information, they can easily use that to impersonate a Dish Network employee, maybe someone from collections or something like that, and get people to pay some fake bills. Or they could even take it further and just use the information, use that background, and maybe gather more intel about the customers and then get them to empty their whole bank accounts. They could run one of those IRS scams or something like that, except it'll be targeted because they actually have more personal information on that person. Now, I haven't seen anything on Black Basta's Onion site saying that they actually had hacked Dish Network or Boost Mobile, but I will say this. If it turns out that this ransomware gang or any other one did hack Dish Network and they actually end up publishing a whole lot of details about how they were able to do it before Dish Network, then that's gonna make Dish look really bad. If they're sitting here saying that, oh, we don't know if customer information has been compromised and they only have three paragraphs to say about the incident while the customer data is actually available for download on the dark web, that's going to erode a lot of customer trust. It's just like what's happening with LastPass's data breach where new information has come out that the same hacker that originally compromised them actually targeted a DevOps engineer's home computer by exploiting a vulnerable third-party media software package which enabled remote code execution on that engineer's PC. And then the hacker was able to get the engineer's master password and even trick them into completing their multi-factor authentication, which gave that hacker access to their LastPass corporate vault. This employee at LastPass was one of four people who had access to this vault, which contained the decryption keys necessary to access LastPass's production backups and other cloud-based storage resources that the company uses. So this hack was possible because a high ranking employee was using their home computer for work and they were mixing personal software like this vulnerable third party media codec that he got from God knows where. And why on earth would you enter a two factor authentication code to the vault when you weren't the one who entered the password to try to access it? Like if that just pops up out of nowhere, that should be a red flag that something is wrong. I mean, come on. This is the kind of thing that you would expect maybe a temp employee or some other minimum wage person that's working there to do, not someone that's in DevOps and has access to the corporate vault. So if you or a loved one is a Dish Network customer, keep an eye out for leaks of personal data. I would imagine that older people would make up more of their customer base because I don't really think that millennials or Zoomers are buying TV service that way. And of course, the older folks tend to be more vulnerable to the social engineering scam. So definitely look out for your old folks. Don't let them go out and buy some Google Play cards to pay their Dish Network bill. And keep an eye out for scams in their emails. It's probably also a good idea for them to change any passwords that were used for their Dish Network accounts because by the time that we find out what kind of data actually was leaked from Dish Network, it's probably gonna already be downloaded by all kinds of bad people and they're already gonna start cold calling them.